Uh, hi again, guys. Um, it's been a long time, um, but it's me, it's Nick. Uh, so what this video is gonna be is it's gonna be well, it's gonna be a group stage and review, which will include me talking about all the players in here, all the important matchups, all the crucial moments, and then it will also be a awards video. And we'll talk about the knockout, three of the four knockouts that have happened so far. I will get, say what I thought was going to happen uh, versus what actually happened for three. And then I'll give a prediction for the footies versus Adonijah, which Spoiler, that is one of the matchups. But, uh, hold up. Let me get the awards list up right here. But, uh, so first and foremost, we're going to talk about, oh, we're going to talk about each player and, uh, what they did right, what they didn't do right, you know. Uh, so, first and foremost, the two things that I need to say out right now. Uh, Maito forfeited his last eight because he just wanted to focus on the knockouts. And Pablo forfeited his last eight because his parents took away his PS4 because he complained about the internet and the lag. So, uh, keep that in mind. Um, but anyhow, let's get into the summary. You know, uh, I'll start off with myself. Um, I lost to Maito. That match, the last video that I made, uh, I said I would win 2-1. I ended up losing 1-0. I had one shot, and it came in like the 78th, 81st minute. It was like half a chance, if that, you know. Uh, my Ita defended very, very well. Uh, and that was actually the only matchup that we played um, in this tournament um, until the knockouts. Um, but uh, that was the only loss that I had, you know. Uh, I drew with Rick, it was a very controversial match, it was definitely fun, um, to say the least. It was 3-3, it was one of the better games of the tournament. Um, he had four shots, and three on target. He could have had very easily had four goals, um, but I had seven shots, four on target, and it was, uh, it should have been 3-0, I missed an open goal. I mean, th there was a very, very, very questionable pen, but it should have been 3-0. If it wasn't, t if it, at least, at the very least, I think... I should have had more, you know. I think 4-3 or 5-4 would have been fair, as was the first match between us, which was one of the best matchups in the tournament. But, uh, yeah, I think the draw was probably one of the best games in the tournament, which I'll get to the best games list later. I'll talk about all the rewards and why they're there, you know. They're, they're going to be, since not many people in the group chat, like, actually messaged, you know, and said that this, this, and this, so these, this person, this person, this person should be in it. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about those. Uh, it's gonna be my own opinion rather than the group, but um, I'll talk about that. So uh, I'll talk about two games that, are, that I won't, or three games I'll talk about. You know, uh, Adonijah versus me, the second one. You, if you uh, know his channel, it's Adonijah and Pinga. Uh, just look up his like music stuff. It's on his Instagram. Um, but uh, what the important thing is at this game was that Adonijah said that Maito was the best person in this tournament. I took offense to that. You know, I wanted to show him that I was the still the best player in the tournament, uh, regardless of his thoughts. I mean, his opinion. It, it, it I felt it was misguided because I felt like. I'll, I'll talk about the Maeda loss for a bit before I go into why I feel like Adonijah's opinion was wrong. Um, but the Maeda in the game, okay, so Atletico Madrid, I used Atletico, he used Liverpool, you know. I was the home team, you know. I knew Maeda was good. I, I mean, I knew he was a, at the very least a dark horse in this tournament, you know, to win the final, you know. To play, at least play in the final, assuming he didn't get one of the big boys, you know. He was definitely, and he was the only one that I felt was capable of knocking off New York Fortis. You know, he lost three another Fortis. He beat Marcelo 6-4 and drew the other game. But, um, I saw that when Marcelo left, I thought we only, there was only three people that were going to have a shot at winning this tournament, you know. My eight told myself in Fortis. And so I, I used Atletico because until that point, I think I'd use Atletico in every single match. So, I, I was like, you know what, why not, why fix it if it's not broken, you know. Uh, you don't repair something that's not broken, you know, you, you keep using it until it becomes broken. Uh, unfortunately, the 4 for 2 with that system, you're supposed to play wide. However, I played very, very sensual, and that played, per oh, that played perfectly into my Ito's hands, you know. Um, he definitely is one of the best defenders, if not the best defenders in this tournament, especially when you get in narrow, 
you know, if you play narrow, you're going to have a tough time breaking him down. Like, that, that's at the end of the day. And he does it perfectly well, you know. He can stifle any offense. Even my own, who scored 86 goals in 20 games, which, funnily enough, the defense was really bad for the final three games, you know. So I conceded, okay, for context, I conceded seven goals in 30 matches. I conceded eight in the first 17, you know. So, like, I was pretty dominant defensively. So, I thought, you know, with my Utah, I was like, you know, let's just keep in the one goal and I'll win this match, you know, or at least come out with the draw, you know. Uh, at this point, I was perfect in the tournament, you know. I mean, there's still a lot of pressure on me. I was kind of looking ahead to the 14th match. I was like, you know, this is going to be a tough match, but I expect to get this done, you know. Let's let's think about 14th once we're in a comfortable position, you know. Uh, let's focus on what we can improve in this game, you know. And it backfired epically. My YouTube completely shut me down. It, it's on his channel. Um, I don't know if I'll link it or not. I highly doubt I will. Boy, I need to adjust myself to where you can actually like see me instead of where it's like this, you know. Well, I feel like it's just weird, you know. Like, yeah, let me try and sit somewhere. Anyhow. Oh, crap. That's not even that much better. Oh, dang. Okay. Let's try that. Oh, my goodness. This, this is going to take up like 12 seconds of this. Okay, I'll just... I don't even know what this, this is scrapped as. I'm just leaning against my bed at this point, you know. But anyhow, um, where was I? Dang. I, I'm sorry you guys just wasted like 20 seconds of your life just like, watching and listening to me complain about not seeing my whole face. I'm still wasting time. Anyhow, with my eat, so I didn't play wide, you know. Uh, yes, it wasn't my best team. Yes, Napoli and Boston are better for me personally when I play with them than Atletico. But Atletico were my team, you know. They are my team. Uh, so I thought, you know what, let's just use them, and it was a bad idea. Uh, I didn't realize it until the knockouts that I really needed to push this game out wide, you know. I, I, I needed to make it towards 1v1, you know, where I'll, I'll push him to where he has to make a read, you know, and if he reads wrong, he gets punished, you know. But I didn't, and he defended perfectly well. It was a, I had zero shots until the 78th minute, and he completely shut me down, okay. Um, so, I can't, I mean, the video is there, you know, my Itzo posted it, um, the footage is there, you know, it completely backs up the statement that that was the best defensive performance in the tournament, considering the opponent, considering the circumstances that I was on, per, had an unblemished mark, you know, I was perfect up until that point, um, and my Itzo had already lost to Footies 3-0, you know, I kind of... I at least expected to get two goals, you know. I, th I knew my E2 was good, and I think I said this as such in the tournament uh, in the last video. It was like two weeks ago. Good grief, it's been that long. Anyhow, but I said that I knew my E2 was good, you know, but I thought I was better, you know. But this match proved that I had still had a long way to go in this tournament, you know. And it ended up being my first loss. It was 1-0. Um, it was a very sweaty goal, but it was, it was very fair that he won that match, you know. He hit the post in the 45th minute. Um, I think he had an offside goal, you know, and then there was like one more shot, and then he had to go the breakthrough 60 minutes. And I was like, you know what? This is this match is just not going my way. You know, I, I can't expect to win this match. You know, I, I just got to get a point. You know, I was like, I was just going for the point, and I still couldn't do anything. You know, I was playing a different style. You know, uh, it was very sluggish, bad gameplay. Like he perfectly. He beat me at my own style, you know, mucking up the game, you know, making it to where the, the other person has to make the breakthrough rather than you making it for them, you know. And he perfectly did it well, and he won one nil as a result. So that, that lowered my confidence a little bit, I'm not going to lie. That was really hit hard there, but it was like, it was the best defensive, defensive performance in the tournament. It's, even now, it's still the best defensive performance a game can save me opponent, but... I'll talk about the Ad Niger game, I'll talk about the two footies matches, you know? And then I think I'll talk about the one with Rick and the one versus Nathan, you know, that I played. I think that'll be it. So uh, that's the context with why Ad Niger thought Maito was the best uh, in terms of better than me. He was because he beat me, which is fair enough. But then he said that Maito can take you out like no one else can in this time, which is true. But I thought I was as good at that, doing that against the majority of people except for him, you know. I feel like he, like, stepped up another level when it was me because it was me, and he told me such. He said, 
that he knew he wanted to bring his best performance, you know, muck of the game, because I am the best. That was his word, you know. He's like, you know, I know you're the best, so I, I wanted to perform the best, you know. And that was how I did it. But Maito humiliated that night. I think it was like five or six. I think it was six nil, you know. And it, he scored the goal of the tournament, in my opinion. Spoilers. Um, I'll list the other two, but I think that, that that was the goal of the tournament. It was his fifth one versus that Niger. He flicked it up over and over and over with Son, you know, and then he right footed, left footed right into the top right hand corner. Nothing else could do. And it was an exclamation point on an emphatic performance. That Niger had like four shots. So, that Niger said in this stream that he thought Maito, even though I'm in the tournament, he said he thought, I think Maito is the best, you know. I think that. He can take me out like no one else can, you know. I was like, oh, <laughs> so long, that's Deca. Shout out, big out, Deca. But anyhow, um, this video is gonna be absolutely ages long. But anyhow, so in this match, I wanted to prove that night that I still am the best, regardless of the Maito performance. I wanted to take him out more so than that than Maito did, you know. I wanted to humiliate him more so than Maito did, and I think I did it. I genuinely, I think it was like 5-1, he had two shots, and it was like, they both came on the, one was like a cider in like the 65th minute, and the other one was an absolute, like, stupid FIFA trap goal, you know, where he's like, he cuts it back, he drags back the goalie, or he like, fake shots the goalie, which doesn't really work in real life, and then he tramps it over to Shakiri, you know, and Shakiri finishes off an open net, despite it should have been being blocked, you know, in the pet build up to the pass, you know. But it was 5-1, it was, it was a very ruthless victory, you know. Um, and I thought, in my opinion, I thought that I showed that at Niger that I still am the best on the tournament, you know. In my opinion, you know. I think, I know Futis and Maito are obviously still there, you know. Or, yeah, they're still there. But I was like, you know what, I'm still better than them, you know. I feel like I am, it's just my cockiness, you know. It's just something that is ingrained in me that I have to be the best at this, you know. That's something that I'm good at, I have to be the best, you know. Uh, uh, there you go. Anyhow, so I'll talk about the two matches for Sportis. I think they both, one came on the f second to last match day or the final match day, one or the other. You know, it might have been the third to last match. It was one of the last match days, regardless. And it was the matchup between first and second. The best offense at the time in Sportis, who had like 40 something goals. And then the best defense in mine, which had conceded, I think the number was five. At that point, you know, um, five or six or something like that, you know, it was a ruthless defense. It was a defense that stopped basically everyone. Even in the loss, it only conceded one goal, you know. It, it hadn't conceded two in a single game, and Fortis had not scored two in a single game other than Mar Marcelo's game, you know. He literally owned everyone offensively, and I owned everyone defensively. It was a matchup everyone's like, you know what, this is a potential final preview. This is the one that we all want to watch, and it turned out to be the first, like at least, an epic, epic, tight, tight defensive tactical game, you know. Very similar to the Maito one, I thought my offense, at this point, uh, my offense had not shown up at this time, in my opinion. I mean, it's shown up against like the garbage people, but in the big games, I think, I think the number was five games I'd played against the people in the top five, I'd scored eight goals. I conceded only one in those games, which is why I won so many of them, you know. But I, I did not feel confident in my offense, and it wasn't that good. 39 minutes in, I think I had one shot 39 minutes in, and Fuji said I had like three chances. I was like, this is not going to end well if this keeps up, you know. I'm scared for my offense. My defense can't hold out for this long, you know. But luckily, since I was using Barca, I had the one player at my disposal that Fortis didn't, that I knew guaranteed that I could score with at any point. I had Messi. And Messi was the difference, as he always is in real life for Barcelona. And for me, he was in this game. Two outside the foot shot goals that completely blew the game wide open, you know. I think every shot I had was with Messi. All four shots were with Messi, you know. Um, Fortis had so many chances, I was like, you know what? He's going to score this. I was like, dang it, he's going to score it. And he just, the, the players couldn't hit the target, you know. And so that was how the, the first game ended in 2 0 victory. My defense stepped up again to hold the result, you know, to keep it at 0 0 for as long as it did. And my offense finally showed up for a li at least a little bit in that game. And then the second one, 
was one of the first matchups in the uh, in the knockouts. Um, but uh, who is it? Or it was in one of the first matchups in the second half of the group stage, which at that point I had one loss and that was it to my Ito, you know. I had taken basically the maximum amount of points and Footies was right behind with twenty four and Maito was third with twenty six, you know. I think Maito played like one match in his final games, you know. He didn't really want to play the last one, but anyhow. So uh, uh, when we played, we knew what was gonna happen, you know. We knew it was gonna be a tight, tight game, you know. And he went 1-0 up like five minutes in, and I was like, oh, crap. But then, like, for both of us, there was, like, intense amounts of lag, you know. It was really, really bad. Suarez got me back in there like 20 minutes in. And then, um, who was it? He went back up 2-1. I think it, it might have been another Benzema blast, but I'm not sure. And then, uh, I think it was Griezmann got me level 2-2, 40 minutes in. And then 45th plus, like, second minute of, like, three out of minutes. I tramp and I cast to go with Semedal, and of course, Messi has to have a say at the Bonobel. He was using Real Madrid, but Messi has to have a say in the Bonobel. Um, as for the, the final, I think it ended up being 4-2. I think the final goal was one of the goals of the tournament. Um, unfortunately, no one saw it, but I think I think I counted the other day. I think it was 15 passes that I made inside his third. To complete the goal, and it was finished up by Dembele, and that was how the. Hold on, I want to pause this for a second. Uh, gotta do something. Sorry, I had to go for a second, but um, where was I? Yeah, but me and Fotis was both of those were probably the tensest games in the tournament. So those were that, and then I'll talk about the draw versus Rick. Actually, no, I already did talk about that. I thought it was kind of undeserved the scoreline for him. You know, he scored a FIFA 19-esque volley from the edge of the box that All Black should have saved. Like, it looked sick on the actual first view, but whenever you look at it again, you can tell All Black should have saved it. And then he scored a 45th plus third minute goal in 45th in two out of minutes times, you know. And it got him back in. It was 2-0. I was comfortable at that point, and then that happened. You know, it kind of killed me momentum-wise. And then I ended up going 3-2, and then he scored that volley. It was like... Are you kidding me? He almost scored at the end, too. It was like a, a pass is over and over that I read and tackled him, and then he kept getting the ball back, and it just fell to grease from him. But luckily, I moved all black. So I knew he where he was aiming in the corners, you know. So I moved my keeper, and I ended up moving the right way, and all black ended up sending it. So it ended up being 3 days. It was one of the best games of the tournament. Both of mine versus Rick, quite frankly, were one of the best games of the tournament. Um, but... Now I'm going to talk about each of the people. I'll start off at Pablo. He was basically the human punching bag in this tournament. You know, 9-2 to 14, 6-0 to me, 5-0 to me when I wasn't even focused on the match. You know, I was focused more on keeping Marcelo in the tournament. Um, he wasn't able, to, Pablo wasn't able to play his matches against anyone else in the second half other than Wilmer. He was 3-0 at that point, you know. Um... He kept getting clobbered. I think his best moment was the 2-0 loss to Mojito, you know. Or beating Wilmer. I think 3-2 versus Wilmer was one of the games of the tournament. In terms of at least tense, the very minimum. You know, and then Mojito was one of the... The 2-0 loss to him was probably a highlight, I guess. I mean, it doesn't really say much about Pablo that one of his highlights is a 2-0 loss, you know. And the other two of, like, his five highlights in this tournament were losing 9-2, 11-0... And 6 nil or 11 nil on over two matches, you know. Um, it doesn't say much about him. I'm trying to I'm trying to adjust myself, you know. Um, but uh, I'm gonna talk about Sebastian. He played decently well, you know. He got a, a f upset victory or two, you know. I say upset victory. He, he tied with Rick. No, that was Wilmer who tied with Rick. But I think that you know. And Sebastian, as with Pablo, was almost like a punching bag at this point. You know, I, I thought he was like, for the top ends, he was like a free victory. He was very, I don't want to say like late with his stuff, but he, he definitely left a lot of his stuff like very late, like on the weekends, you know. Um, but he, he, was a good he was a good matchup for everyone in the bottom half, not so much in the top half. Um, TJ took place for Eddie. Um, uh, Eddie decided he wanted to focus on other things other than this tournament, so TJ took his place, 
And TJ got a few wins. You know, he got 16 points. He put himself in the spot to get the final. Since 10 and 11, Pablo and Sebastian didn't want to play in the lower league knockouts. So we decided to just do Wilmer versus TJ. If one match, winner takes all, gets to the final spot, you know, gets to the final spot on the knockouts. But TJ played very well. You know, he, he pushed footies to the limit. Um, he, I think, did he beat Adam? No, he didn't beat Adam. He, I know he beat Sebastian. I think he beat Wilmer. I think there's like a couple, a couple of like highlights, you know. But he was mostly like a good fill-in, you know. But it, it kind of fell apart at the end. He kept losing like six 0 to Brian, to Nathan, to um, Wilmer in the final match. Yeah. Wilmer clobbered him in that match, you know. Wilmer was just vibing in that match, yeah, according to his own words. But uh, TJ was a good player, you know. He's a good sport, definitely. He was very nice in the tournament. He was probably one of the most liked people in this tournament, just for how funny he was. Um, but I think uh, he was overall, he didn't really have too much of an impact, you know. Um, and now we move on to the people who made it. Actually, it was the top eight people. It wasn't like anyone like... Pablo making it in with like a massive lower league level run, uh, Sebastian or TJ making it, it was Wilmer, the, the best one of the four in my opinion, uh, he made it, you know, Wilmer uh, definitely played a lot of people well in the first five games, you know, he was very close until he played me, I think that was the first time he lost by more than two goals, um, he played very well against a lot of people, including Adonijah, um, Brian, he... I think he played well and a little bit against Nathan, you know, uh, tied with Rick, you know, uh, it was a very impressive performance for someone at the eighth position, he was about as impressive as he can get, you know, um, he did very, very well in this tournament, and, uh, spoiler alert, he's still going on in this tournament, it's the semifinals now, you know, uh, he's still going on, he, he won his knockout stage uh, tie against the Brian, spoiler, um, so he's played very well. Um, as for expectations, I think, I mean, he is a, he was always going to be like an underdog or an appetizer, as I called him earlier today. Um, but I think that, you know, in terms of how high can he go, I think if he gets the right, pulls off an upset or two, you know, if he, like, makes the first leg close on the semis and, and all hell breaks loose in the second leg, he can definitely do it, you know. He can definitely still go on in this tournament. I'm adjusting my bed right now. I should have keep coming off. Okay, we're back. I still have to adjust my sheets, but anyhow, now I'm going to talk about Nigel. Um, the first match, the first few matches, he is very, very unlucky. He's probably the best player I said to not have a single point. You know, um, he played me and Marcelo like the first two games and the two favorites basically in the tournament. He played in the first two games, you know. Um, you can't really do much about that. Uh, I think he's played very well in this tournament so far in terms of, like, beating the people at the bottom four. But I think in terms of, like, once you get to the top, I think I don't think he's going to do much against them. Uh, he did beat Rick, though, in probably, in my opinion, it was the most tense game and it was the best game in that tournament, you know? At least for the group stage, which, again, spoiler, that's your best game in the winner. Um, but he's played very well. As for my Ito, I think... Enough is said. He beat me. I mean, enough said. He he was one of the favorites in this tournament for sure. And the fact that he, he was just wanted to focus on the knockout show how serious of a contender he was, you know. So I, I reckon he's a good one. Um, I'm gonna talk about Brian. Um, he played reasonably well against me, you know. Um, he scored against me in the first one that caught me off guard. I ended up winning that one five one, and then the second one I was super pissed, but it was like it was four three, so close. And quite frankly, he should have won the game, like or at least tied from three goals down. You know, um, it was it was pathetic on my part. I was very furious, and uh, I was living. You know, uh, I just can't. You know, I I, lo I love. He was like he was hated for the fact that. For no other reason than the fact that it was close, you know. A lot of people felt like they should have gotten way, way, way more goals, you know, and stuff. So, uh, Brian was one of the mediocre, I mean, his record. <laughs> Look at his record. He was minus two goal difference, you know. Ten wins, ten losses, no draws, you know. He was pretty much the definition of mediocrity, 
Um, no offense to you, Brian. You, you played very well, considering the, all the circumstances. You played very well, especially as a stand-in for Jose, you know. He came in, he got way more points than Jose would have gotten, you know. Um, and so, I think that, you know, he's been, he played very, very well in this tournament. Nathan, I thought, was the, when Marcelo left and when uh, Jose left, I thought Nathan would take the uh, win. It became apparent that there would only be three. I thought Nathan would be the most likely to break the top, you know, to um, beat either me, Maito, or Futi. So I thought he was the most capable of doing it, you know. Uh, so he, he that speaks enough of volumes about him. I, I respected him a lot. He was very liked in this tournament. He was very active in this tournament. Um, if he, it just, Nathan, if you watch this video, if you want to try and do the draw the semis you can I mean it's either gonna be Hyro or Jalen odds are but you are on the list for people who want to do draws I think you've earned that right you played very well in this tournament you were very happy and eager about this tournament you know and I, I respect it you know I respect you and I respect the fact that you played well in this tournament you know um Rick I feel like is up there as the most hated no offense to him buddy but like he would always whenever he lost it wasn't the fact that how he lost it was the way he acted after he lost, you know. I'm upset because I don't expect to lose. Like, that's just who I am. But he he treats it like whenever he loses, he treats it like it was, the other guy was lucky, you know. And, yeah, I'm sure there was, like, a goal, too. But, like, he, he had valid points in the, about the luck system, you know. But I think that calling myself lucky when I, I completely outplayed him, I felt I was kind of unjust on that, and that kind of got under my skin. And then... He kept saying that the lag killed him against Footies when he lost H2. You know, it's like, it's not the way he lost, it's how he acted after the way he lost, you know? It, it kind of got under people's skins, and he definitely is up there as a most hated. He's not the most hated, but he's definitely up there in terms of how many people he pissed off. But uh, Footies and I, I think, I told Footies at the start of the tournament, before he played Marcelo, and before I played Maito, I said that it seemed like me and Fotis are on a collision course in the final, and um, this proves, I mean, he has the second best defense, you know, um, by good margin, it's the second best defense, like, it's, there's no way he's close to being first, like, no offense to Fotis, but come on, look at my defensive record, like, come on, and he has one of the best offenses to boot, and in my opinion, he has a better offense than Rick, I think the 8-2 victory versus Rick showed that, um, I think he is definitely the biggest threat to me um, after these knockouts. But uh, I think that's about it. Hold up. I'm going to check something really quick for the group chat, and I'll be back for the rewards. All right. So um, I've dealt with that. It, the final semifinal match might be on the way. So I will do the awards ceremony. If that starts, then I'll do a second video where I talk about the round up basically the the knockouts um so the top eight made it so wilmer and the niger maito brian nathan rick footies and myself hyrule did the draw he did a fantastic job but before i talk about the draw and the results and what i thought was gonna happen which would actually happen i'm gonna do the award ceremony so i'm gonna read off the list give me a second so the list goes as follows most hated most interesting game best game best moment most improved Unluckiest, worst moment, most impressive player, best overall performance, most disappointing performance, most surprising performance, most liked, and of course, the fastest goal. Um, I think we did the best goal. Is the best goal in there? No, best goal. I think that would probably count as the best moment. I think best moment counts as both like the best goal and the best moment. So, uh, let's talk about the most hated. I think there's, there's three in this category. I, I already mentioned Rick. I think I am in it because you guys can't see it here, but I was very cocky in the group stage. I still am cocky in the knockouts, you know. I say what no one wants to hear, you know. I'll, I'll make it sound like I'm a jerk, you know, quite frankly. That's probably about as simple as it can get. Um, but uh, I think I was hated because not only because I backed up the talk, but because of how much I talked, you know. Um, so I think I'm in there. Rick is in there because of the fact that he got in people's skin by saying that they were lucky when they won or that they shouldn't have won or that there was lag rather than the fact that he actually lost. Um, I think Brian was there because he 
got some closer, but he's not going to win. So it's between me and Rick. I think this one is going to be the one I go with the group state, group chat with. I think the group as a whole would say I am the most hated. I made so many jokes about when people lost. I made so many jokes about how I have the, the best defense or the best offense and how I haven't lost that much or I've only lost once or I've drawn once, you know, and you've lost 12 times. You lost to me 5-0. You lost to me 6-0. And it's like, it, 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 I think it's fair, you know. Um, so I win the most hated just as you do crown yourself the most hated. That's just what you do, you know, when you're me. Um, so most interesting game, there is going to be, this is going to be from the group stage, and it's not going to be from the knockout. So I think the knockouts, there's a clear winner. But I think from the group stage, okay, so the nominees are myself versus footies. I had a versus me in the first game. I'm counting both of myself, myself versus footies, both games. I think that's fair. And I think TJ, nor, uh, I think... Nathan versus Brian was probably one of the more intriguing ones, you know, um, because they're cousins, you know, if you didn't know that, they're cousins, Nathan and Brian cousins, so it was, it was going to be funny to see cousins play each other in the same room, basically, they they use the same PS4, they live in the same house, you know, I guess it must be a big house, it's kind of weird, but, you know, or not weird, it's just unorthodox, that's probably the better word, but I think, uh, I think myself versus Adnaja has to win this one. I think myself versus Footies was probably the better game. It was the one that more people were looking forward to. But I think in terms of most interesting, the first game in the tournament has to be there. You know, it's the first game. You know, you can't really, you know, say it's not interesting that it's the first game in the tournament. It's the two founders against each other. It's Atletico versus Liverpool. It's got to be the most interesting, you know. If you were a neutral, this is the one that you would want to start the tournament off with. And it was a very good game, you know. Very tight, you know. A lot of chances for Adonijah, not many for me. It was, it was the perfect start to the tournament, basically. I think it was the most interesting. Now, the best game, I think, myself versus Adonijah, I think that's going to be one. I think myself versus Rick, the first matchup and the second matchup. And I think uh, there's going to be like four categories for this. I think Rick versus Nathan. Dang, Rick was in a lot of these good games, you know. Rick versus Nathan. Uh, so Rick is in three, and then Rick versus Anija. So Rick is in four matchups of this. I myself am in two, um, and Anija is in two. No, am I in two? Yeah, I'm in two, and Anija is in two. I think though I spoiled it earlier. I said Rick versus Anija was the best game. I think mine versus Rick, the two one was probably the lowest scoring game. That should have been like five four. Genuinely, so many blown chances for both of us. You know, it was one of the best games. It was probably the most end to end. You know. Um, I, th I remember very vividly that uh, he, I, missed, I hit the post in the first like five minutes, and then like four minutes later he hit the post with Messi, and then he met, he red timed a header. It hit off the post. He got scrambled over the line, you know. He got or blocked up the line, scrambled out, and then the other end I ended up uh, missing an open goal or not reacting quick enough. You know, I hit the post again, and then my player didn't react quick enough, and then. Literally right then, like, I'm not even joking, like 10 minutes later, he goes clean through with Griezmann, misses the chance, and then the attack, counterattack for me, I miss a wide open chance, you know, an easy chance that I'd normally score. Um, so it was very back and forth, and it only went 1-0 after I hit the post again, and I got the rebound scored, and then after that, it was very, very open. It was still, I think it was one of the best games in the tournament, but I think in terms of Adonijah versus Rick, the reason it's tops of mind both of mine, actually, is because of how important it was. You know, I think Adonijah had to get a... If Adonijah got any point, if he lost to Rick by, like, 4-0 or something like that, or if he, even if he lost to Rick, then TJ, if TJ beat Rick, which Rick was probably... It was contemplating quitting the last game, you know, not playing it, and just giving it to TJ. And then if TJ beat Adonijah, then TJ would get the final auto birth over um, Adonijah... You know, but um, at this point, Wilmer was ninth, you know, but TJ decided to forfeit his last few matches. Actually, no, he lost, I think, 6 0 to Rick, and then he forfeited the last match. He just, like, couldn't be bothered. So, Wilmer took the final, the eighth place spot. But if TJ won both matches and Adnaja lost both matches, then it would be very close. If not, TJ would have gotten that final auto bird. So, I think in terms of importance, that was why that's higher, you know. 
it was very end to end. Rick, I feel, was very unlucky. That he said he was very unlucky this game. I think I have to agree with him. I think he definitely should have scored more than like two. You know, four two was very unfair to him. And I should have got the gutsy gutsy victory. It's on his channel. It's a very good game in my opinion. Probably the best in the tournament. Uh, in the group stage, at least the most entertaining. Best moment, I think I think we're gonna go to the best goal here. So I think mine versus Fortis, the 15 pass movement that got finished off with the Pele's on there. Jose rainbow flicking Pablo's goalie uh, to make it four or five nil, I think right before the stroke at halftime. I think that's on the list as well. I think, but I think the winner is gonna be um, Maitos versus and I should so now though, it was his Fourth or fifth goal in the in the game, you know, he, he completely destroyed Ed Nigel with Sonaldo. Um, he kept flicking it up over and over, just humiliating, messing around clearly, and then he shot it. And it was just a perfect beauty right into the top corner. It was, it was easily the best goal in the tournament, you know. So the best moment, I think, that's got to go to that, you know. Uh, most improved, I think, Wilmer is the most improved. I think the options are Wilmer, Brian. And Nathan, I don't think anyone else really qualifies as most improved, you know. But I think Wilmer's got to be there, you know. He didn't get a win in his first four games, and then 16 matches later, he has 16 points. You know, that's that's pretty impressive considering the monopoly the top five had for a long time. You know, it was I think by a good margin. I think the only reason Brian got over it was because Maito quit the last match. So I think for the majority of the time, I think the top five had like a 12 point gap, you know, on sixth. You know, it was a big gap between. Like fifth and sixth, you know. The only reason it got close is because Mike still decided to forfeit the last matches. Otherwise, it probably would have been way wider, you know. I don't think Mike still loses eight matches. You might lose two of those matches. I think he wins every other match, you know. So I think most improved has to go to Wilmer. I think Nathan improved in the fact that he got better as long as the games went, you know. He got a lot more competitive because I think the first match was like 4 0 to Fortis versus him, you know. And it was like 2 0 to me, and then after that, boom, he just started turning it on, you know. So I think, but I think Wilmer's got to be the most improved from 0 points to like 16, you know. Considering all circumstances, I think that is the most improved. Worst moment. Ooh. Worst moments. Ooh. Ah, that's a tough one. There hasn't really been that many bad moments, per se. I think Mark versus Rick, like, moments, you know, I think that, that, that's that gotta count, you know, I think we have some serious beef with each other at this point, um, I think mine versus Brian, I think I got very upset in that, you know, that it was like 4-3, or was, no, it ended up being 6-3, but like, I was upset that it was that close, you know, for 4-3 for a long time, and I actually had to exert myself against Brian, um, maybe John, there's actually, worst moment, maybe Jose beating Pablo 11-0, um, there hasn't really been that. I think I would go with the worst moment in terms of the tournament. The closest one to destroying the whole con integrity and the concept of the tournament has to be my worst Brian. I think that, that there's no other option there. Um, so I think that has to be the most time, the most worst moment, most impressive player. Ooh, I think that's got to be me. I, I hate to toot my own horn in this case, you know, as the most impressive before player. But like, come on, look at the stats. Double the like half the more than half amount less goals than footage you know which he says 33 out of 15 is less than half of his you know and I've scored nine more goals you know than Nathan you know or than Rick you know and Rick had the benefit of getting like two or three two no three three no victories against Sebastian Pablo and uh, Maito which he most certainly have gotten not gotten I don't think he would have gotten three again against Maito. I think Maito would have taken him completely serious, you know. But maybe maybe my, Maito gives a three. You know, that might happen, but I think in terms of like the actual stuff, you know, I think mine's the most impressive. 18 one and one like, Come on now. 20 matches to lose only one, to draw only once, considering the whole circumstance in the tournament where everyone else has at least four losses, you know, and everyone else... For the most part, has at least one draw, you know. And Pablo has 17 losses. I have more wins than he has losses, you know. Well, actually, no, that kind of makes sense. But you know what I mean. Uh, I think that I hit the two my home for that one. I think that I have to take most impressive. 
I think best overall performance, I mean, I think it's kind of the same thing, you know. Um, I think that's got to count that. But I think I'm going to talk about, I think, the best overall performance for a game. I think mine versus Amnesia and Maitos versus mine. I think the more impressive of the two is Maitos versus me. Because it's me, because it's the number one offense versus a person who had, at that point, lost 3-0 to Footies like two games earlier, you know. So I think that was definitely the most impressive performance. You know, one shot. One shot, you know. So I think that's going to get there. So I think the next two or most disappointing, oh, dog issues, most disappointing performance and most surprising performance. Most disappointing has got to be on that show. Seventh place, come on now. Uh, I thought he was I thought he was one of the best players in the tournament, but he just couldn't finish up the results. It kept disappointing, you know. Most surprising, Brian getting 30 points is very impressive, you know. I think that that's the most surprising in terms of, like, the top eight. I don't think anyone else up there is, like, super, super surprising, you know. I think Brian getting 30 points, though, is very, very impressive. Um, but so most disappointing goes to Nigel. I think the best, most surprising was Brian. Uh, most liked, okay, this is the second to last award. The la Actually, no, I'll talk about the fastest goal. Also scored by Brian. I think it was a minute 58 on the clock in versus Nigel. It might have been a minute 30. It was, like... I think maximum 20 seconds into the game, in real life into the game, you know. Um, so he scored very, very quickly. It was basically from kickoff. He is the only kickoff goal in this tournament so far. But um, so fastest goal award goes to Brian, you know. And then uh, was there any one nil victory? I can't think of latest goal, you know, or like worst. game. What was the worst game actually? I'll do, I'll do that one now, and then we'll do the most liked because that's probably gonna be a lot harder. Um, the worst game. Hmm. I think mine versus Maito was very dull, but I don't think it was the worst game. It's probably the most tense of the worst games. You know, I think it's in there because the gameplay was so bad. Because the game was so really hard to watch. It was just defense, 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 tactics, 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 and then like offense two or three times. You, you know. So I think that one's there, but I don't. I I don't think that's the worst game. I think it's got to be one of the blowouts. I think 11 0 versus Pablo. Joseph versus Pablo has got to be the one in here. I can't really think of any other worst games. Oh, A2. Footies versus Rick. That's got to be on there. Um, but I think 11 0 Pablo losing to Jose, who was second bottom versus bottom. You know, then nothing about the matchup screamed intense, or nothing about the matchup screamed to it. You know, so I think um, that has to be the worst. And so now for most liked, I think Nathan's on here. Maito's on here. And I was on here. Pablo would be on here if he was actually like won a little bit more matches or if he played more matches. He would be a lovable loser, but I don't think he's on here. I think, ooh, no one ever got hurt by Nathan. You know, and everyone liked Nathan in the tournaments. Same with that Nigel nice to an extent. They really like jabbing at him for not winning or finishing up a result when he should have. You know, but I, this is gonna be between uh, Wilmer's on there too. You know. I think Maito is the most liked for the group by because he beat me, and he was like always very humble about it. Ah, this is a tough one, you know. I don't know who wins this one. Um, oh man, this is actually. Really, I'm gonna say Nathan. I say Nate. I think Nate and Nate's statement about Maito being the best kind of. I mean, that, that's my opinion though. Uh, that's a really tough one, though. Ah, they're all liked, you know. They, they, none of them did anything that really pissed me off. Like, even when Maito beat me, he was still very humble about it. He wasn't like, oh, I beat you. It was like, oh, you suck, Nick, or something like that. It's like, oh, you only have one shot? Psh, you were son of thought, or something like that. No, he's like, dang, I knew you were the best. I knew you were one of the best, and you played like it. You know, even though it wasn't your day, you still gave that aura. He's like, I was like, wow, this guy is pretty likable. For his, like, I don't like to lose, you know. I never like to lose in a game, you know. More so, it's one that I'm really good at, and especially in the tournament. But you know, Maito was like, I was like, all right with it. But um, that's the awards. I think that's the awards done. I mean, very subjective, but I think that's a pretty fair yes for like all the stuff. Now we move on to the knockouts. So um, Hyrule did the draw. I don't think I'll be able to put a link in because it would just take absolutely ages to upload it. You know, but uh, or absolutely ages to like exit this video, copy, copy down the link, put his channel, 
Um, but I'll just spoil the matchups. Um, Hyro, you did a very good job, by the way. But uh, I played my Ito, so that was the only match that we had was the one no victory for my Ito in my backyard. So I think that was the, that was the first matchup. Um, Brian with the home leg versus Wilmer for the first leg. Um, so that was the second matchup. Brian versus Wilmer. Wilmer getting a pretty favorable matchup there, about as good as you could have hoped for. Um, Rick versus Nathan, or Nathan versus Rick. Nathan versus like home. Um, so that was another good matchup, and then I don't know versus what these. I think. In terms of evenness, I think that you couldn't have picked the more even matchups, you know, like hand-picked. I think that's about as even as they get, you know. Um, so, I think I'm going to talk about what I expected to happen versus what I actually did, because three out of the four are done, and then the fourth one might be about to happen. But, uh, so, me versus Maito. I think everyone who saw the draw in the group chat said, oh, damn, literally. And they were like, wow, this is the first matchup? Are you kidding me? It is a final worthy match. 100%. Everyone was in agreement. Everyone knew that the winner of this would have a huge momentum boost and would probably win the tournament, you know. The, the, they have been tried and tested. There's still footies in the way for the winner, too. But footies now sees one of them knock the other out, you know. So footies has one less contender. I think the majority wanted my youths to win. Here's how I thought it would go down. Versus, I'll tell you how it actually... I thought... I knew my, his, my youths offense wasn't good enough to beat me. So I thought, if I can win one match by three goals, this tie is done. I was like, his defense is good enough to win, but I just have to figure out the defense. And I was like, this first leg is going to be crucial. If it's 2-1 in the first leg, I'll take that because it's winner take all. But I was like, if I win a match by two or three goals, this tie could very well be done and not dusted. Because I didn't think his offense was good enough to overcome a two or three goal deficit. He's not built to hold, he's built to hold a lead and to build a lead not to come back from a deficit, you know. Um, I think I thought I said the aggregate for this game would be four to three. I thought he would get two goals and I would lose the first leg two one, which actually did end up happening. I nailed that on them. I'll talk about the first leg in a bit, but and then I I thought that I would get the job done in the second leg. I would get three goals. I thought that that would be the killer in the second leg, and I ended up with being right, but just. I was, like, basically bang on. So, um, the first leg went about the same as the first game versus Maito, you know. Except Maito got two pens. He converted one. I saved one, which is very crucial. Because it was, like, the first 15 minutes, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And he got a pen, and he went 1-0 up. And he uh, got it saved. But he had already been up 1-0. Um, so, that, that would have been 2-0. I would have been, like, well and truly screwed 25 minutes in. I would have been 2-0 down to the defense that just built to take me down, you know. When I used Barcelona, it was very narrow, which, again, I didn't learn from my mistake in the first game. It, it played right into Maito's hands, you know. Um, having a narrow, narrow pitch in offense made it really predictable, and since he's very good defensively, he was able to predict every single time, and he kept breaking it up, breaking it up. And then he got a second pen, I think, like, right on the stroke at half time, you know, and he scored it in the same direction. He went the same direction. I went the opposite direction. I did the first one, and he scored it. And it was 2-0. And at that point, I was crapping myself, you know. I did not think I was going to get out of that tie alive. I did not think I would have anything in my locker to overcome that because I had no inspiration, you know. Uh, it didn't seem like Messi was doing messy things. It didn't seem like I was uh, bombing forward it with glee, you know. Like, with some of the matches, I was just attacking, attacking, attacking. There was nothing. It was unrelenting, you know. It was the ultimate destruction of a, a player, you know. But with Maito in that first, like, for at least the first 60 minutes, I felt nothing. I did not feel like I could get that anything out. He just kept attacking me over and over and over and kept just stopping me, stopping me, stopping me. I was like, I was just getting frustrated with this crap. And then the breakthrough happened. The big moment, I think the moment that completely... Turned the whole tie on its head, you know. Everyone knew the tie was now and truly on, you know. The away goal. It was, um, it was very quickly taken, you know. Um, at this point, I was trying to push the ball out wide because I was trying, I was noticing that, like, he kept short, shunting me down the middle. I was like, you know what, if he affords me the wide spaces, I'll keep doing it. So at halftime, I made it to where Griezmann drips wide, so it drags him out where Maito will now have to mark outside and then I can cut it back inside on my glee. Um, 
but so I received the ball with Messi after I won the tackle. I built up a few times down the middle, you know. But I made sure that I pushed the ball at Messi a little bit out more wide, you know. So where if I'm trying to find something, I can't find. Okay, so just say my hand is like the middle of the pitch, and then this part is like the circle, like that right there is the circle, like from this part over. So what ended up happening is I received the ball right about here, and I dragged Messi up a little bit right here, and I triggered the run for Griezmann who was right here, so where he drifted out like that. So then I threw balled him around the edge since Messi has the left foot of dreams and the curve of dreams. I threw balled it around the edge. And so it completely bamboozled Maito's defense. It was an opening, a clear opening. He brought out his keeper. I chipped it with Griezmann. It was a very, very crucial goal, you know. And at that point, I knew, I was like, okay, this might be how I beat Maito, you know, drifting out wide. And at that point, you know, I pretty much dominated the match offensively, you know. I finally found my rhythm, you know. I was finally passing it around. He was worried of it defensively. Uh, I missed a couple of chances, but he did end up getting a couple of chances, but... I think the first leg ended up as it should. I don't think I should have gotten anything more from that than the 2-1 and the away goal, you know. I think that was a very fair defense. Everyone was like, wow, this second leg is going to be tense as crap. So the second leg comes, and instead of using narrow Barcelona, I decided to switch things up. In a crucial moment, I decided not to use Barcelona, and it paid off perfectly. I used Napoli. I used the one team I hadn't used against Maito. I used the one team that had pace in abundance, a defense, a mean defense. And then two clinical strikers, more than more, more meta strikers than what I'm used to playing with Atletico in Barcelona, and very good wide players, and that was crucial. I moved. What ended up happening is in the second leg. So normally I set up when I played with Barcelona and when I played with Atletico. Atletico, I make it to where the pitch is narrow, even though it's a four ball two. I, since Coke is a center midfielder at heart, I wanted to make the mid pitch narrow. So I ended up playing it more narrow than normal. Or than no, than the formation suggested. So Carrasco was basically worthless. So that played perfectly into Manito's hands in the first game. The second game I did more of the same. I played four one two and two second with Barcelona. I played the pitch narrow. I made it narrow. I wanted to beat him down the middle, and it was a stupid idea. So in the third one, I was like, you know what? Let's use Napoli. Let's use the players who are great at wide: Mertens, Insigne, Palatano, Lozano. Um, and even Fabian, to an extent, can drift out a little bit to the left, you know. So I was like, you know what, this defense is good enough to stop Liverpool, you know, especially Manolas and Kulipati. Like, come on now. They're like two, the most OP centre-back pairing in, in the game, basically. Um, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to adjust the bars to where normally I would keep that like four bars for width. I adjusted it to like seven or eight. I think it was actually seven. I had the players in the box at six, which is what I normally have. And I had the width for the defense at like four or five basically average a little bit below average and it worked perfectly I went 1-0 up four minutes in and everyone was like oh wow he finally made the breakthrough and it was the perfect breakthrough I mean there was a lag for him that wasn't for me and I think that also played a factor and I kept pushing out white Politano was the main outlet um, and then and, and before you know it 22 minutes in it was 3-0 and that's how the tie ended because we didn't do another match you know I felt bad about the way it ended with lag you know um, 22 minutes, 22, 23 minutes in, we stopped, you know. And Signe had two goals. Uh, Fabian had a nice late taking one. But every single one of them came with a cut inside from the edge of the area, you know. Um, it was perfectly, the, it was, the wit killed Maito, and it ended up forcing him to have to mark man-to-man, -man, mark the runs out wide rather than down the center, you know, which is what he's killer at, and it ended up, like, uh, as he is killer at stopping those, he ended up killing him going out wide. And Napoli ended up being the, the key to unlocking Mahito. But, uh, so I ended up 4-2 on aggregate. Uh, we were going to do two more matches because I did feel bad about the lag. Um, he felt bad about the first leg because he said it didn't feel like a win because of how much it was lagging at some point, you know, at points, you know. And I didn't feel like that would happen because it, if he had lag, I felt like it was kind of, Bad. So we just we're gonna count the first two games. We're gonna do two matches at Anfield, two matches at the Na Naples. You know. But um, Maito had a bunch of work, so Maito said, "You know what, Nate? You've earned it. Here you go." So I am in the semis. Uh, so I would talk about Brian versus Wilmer. I said in the group chat that this is probably the one that no one cares about, but it, as such, is probably gonna be the best matchup. I thought it was gonna be. 
five five on aggregate. I thought Wilma would go through in a week. I thought this would be a very very close matchup, and it, I ended up being right. A Wilma did go through it was six five instead of um, five five, but Wilma went through. It was two three for him in the first leg, and then in the second leg he got a red card and had to grind out a three three result. You know, it was a very up and down entertaining game, um, or at least it seemed like it. Very tense, I'm sure. Um, and two people who knew that this was probably the best shot that they're going to have to go into the semis and beyond, you know. The, the odds are they're going to lose to the majority of the people this, that Lara left in the tournament, if not everyone left in the tournament. So they knew that this would be their, their one shining moment to, you know, kind of remind you guys of March Madness. But, yeah, so uh, Wilmer ended up going through an entertaining and back-and-forth affair against Bryant. Um, and... Then Rick versus Nathan. I thought this is just like Wilmer and Brian, except just more, or except better players and more attention. You know, um, I thought this is very well poised. I thought Nathan was the more likely to beat either Fortis, myself, or Maizo, but I thought Rick was probably the better between the two. And yeah, it was not close. I thought it would be close. I thought Nathan would get it done. Um, but he lost 9-2 on aggregate. Um, 4 won the first game, 5 won the second game. Very comprehensive defeat. Very clear victor between the two, and it was very un unexpected to me. Um, but yeah. So, uh, yeah. I think I think that's the video. It's probably going to be like 40 minutes long. Hey, well, let's check to see how long this thing is. 56 minutes, so it's, oh wow, this is almost an hour long, so, um, yeah, so, uh, that's my group stage awards and talk of the knockouts, so, myself, Rick, and Wilmer are into the final four, um, we are waiting at an IG versus Footies, I will talk about that for a brief second, I think Footies should comfortably win this tie, if the, he kills in the first leg, I think the tie is done and we can just pencil in. Fortis, uh, Wilmer, and Rick, as well as myself as the semifinalists. And I think of, in order, I think the most likely is one, Fortis and myself. I think we're very equal. Uh, three would be Rick, and then Wilmer's four. Like, Wilmer's the surprise in this group. I think we all knew that if the draw happened, like, where it's a bunch of random matchups, I thought, I think everyone knew that um, there would at least be one surprise. I think Wilmer's the surprise to make it to this this point, especially since he was eight, and since he had zero points after like four or five match days, you know, or zero wins after four or five match days, correction. So, um, I think Fotis will win that one. 6 3, I think that that's a fair one. I think if he kills in the first leg, I think it doesn't matter in the second leg, regardless of what Amnesia does. If Amnesia keeps it 2 1, it might be, might be game on, but I think Fotis has got this. I think we will have our four semifinalists soon. Um, but, uh, thank you guys for all watching. I hope there's not, like, too much background noise. There might have been some yelling. Um, sorry for this thing being so long. But, uh, thank you guys for watching. And hopefully I'll see you guys after the semifinals to talk about the final. I won't get ahead of myself, though. But, uh, thank you guys for watching. And see ya!